Ladies and gentlemen, the show is about to start. Take your seats. Places, everyone. Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah Mensa, and I'm the board chair of an exciting new venture that's called North Pole Studios. So some time ago, long before COVID, a small and passionate group began convening on my living room floor. And together we built a vision for how we could serve the underserved community of artists with autism and others in an inclusive way. Quite frankly, that vision continues to build as we understood how deep the need is within the community. It got bigger due to COVID-19. That need starts the moment someone is born that has something that makes him or her different. And that need is for the community that sees them as equals. It supports them and gives them a chance to reach their full potential and includes them as part of the expanded art community. So today we officially launched the answer to this gaping need within our community and we unveil North Pole Studios. We will let you know more about what we're up to in a minute, but first let me give you a little bit about the details of what we're gonna expect for tonight. First, we're gonna focus on straight giving and we're gonna do a paddle race. And this will be the part where we humbly make an ask for how you can support us by just simply giving your hard earned dollars so that we can meet this critical need that exists today. We will do that through this paddle race and we will hear how many of you have already contributed and that we have tremendous momentum which indicates that the need is also tremendous. Next, we'll hear directly from artists with autism and those who are in the expanded art world. Most of the artists you'll hear from tonight have contributed to tonight's auction with amazing art and they have amazing stories to tell as well. So the art is amazing on its own, but when you hear the stories behind what's going on in this art, it's gonna make you wanna snap up the art that's part of this auction tonight. Finally, we'll end the evening with a word from our founder, who just actually happens to be my son, Davis. And he's gonna share with us a very special story. And hopefully by the time we'll end up with tonight, you'll understand our unique name, North Pole Studio, and why the story of Rudolph and his heroism is an inspiration that's driving us at this very moment. So what are the stakes tonight? Tonight is so important. We are in this startup phase the North Pole Studio team is 100% volunteer run. Our board is 100% volunteer run. And our staff is made up of two amazing and passionate women who left great jobs in support of pursuing that passion to support this mission. So when you give tonight, know that your gift is going right into our ability to directly support an artist to start learning and growing and ultimately being discovered and with that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the indomitable Sula Wilson and Mary Ellen Anderson, working wonders every day. Hi everyone, I'm Sula and I am one of the co-founders of the North Pole Studio. Hi everyone, my name is Mary Ellen and I'm also a co-founder of the North Pole Studio. This studio is grounded in our fundamental belief that every person has an important story to tell. We believe that the contemporary art scene, both in Portland and beyond, is incomplete without equitable representation of all human experiences. This studio exists to support and advocate for artists with autism and intellectual and developmental disabilities, providing vital opportunities for total engagement in the arts. We identified the need for the studio while working as educators at a school that specializes in supporting students with autism. We saw our students creating poignant and powerful artwork that was indicative of their interior dialogue, their feelings, their movements, their stories, their experiences, their interests, and their desires. Art served as a form of expression beyond the verbal and written language, which for many of our students were not functional ways to communicate. Much of the artwork was created with a lack of self-consciousness which lent to its honesty and importance. We knew that the art was telling a story that was not being proportionally represented in the art world. As our students approached adulthood, we recognized the need to seek out supported spaces for these artists to create, not only because of the value art holds for them in their life, 
but also because of the value their art will provide for the world. Using the information our students had expressed about the kind of place that would best support them, we began envisioning the studio. A small-scale, quiet environment, a place that promotes self-determination by engaging artists in informed decision-making about how their work is marketed, priced, and sold. A place where creative risk-taking is encouraged, professional goals are realized, and communication is always supported. There is a deep history of adults with disabilities working in isolation, and so it became important when selecting our space that the space itself facilitate inclusion in the expanded arts community, and also that the space be easily accessed by the community. The need for this studio was present long before COVID. Over the past few months, we have seen the loss of so many essential services for artists with disabilities. One of the most heartbreaking was the closure of a studio space that was supporting over 75 working artists. These changes have made the need for our studio greater than ever. This fall, we have brought artists together by providing small group, outdoor, and Zoom meetups, by launching a virtual exhibition space, collaborating with like-minded organizations, and setting the foundation to represent artists through our website. We will continue to creatively use the virtual world to advocate for artists and to build connections. And we also believe that it's essential for artists to access physical space, materials, community, and to receive direct support. I am so excited for Mary Ellen to share more about our studio space in the Northwest Marine Works Artist Collective later tonight. We are so grateful for the diverse community of artists, educators, parents, advocates, and truly kind-hearted people who have supported this effort. I especially want to thank the volunteer-run North Pole Studio team who has worked so hard and has been more creative and visionary than we ever could have imagined. Thank you uh, so much. Amazing, um, amazing to hear. Now you know a little bit more about where we're going with this incredible opportunity. It's time for the first phase of our event, the Paddle Race. And I want all on the call to know that we hope to run the studio in a very lean way. Our needs at the inception will probably be bigger than they will be at any other time in our operation. And for that reason, we're in need of true angels who see the need, are interested in being part of something truly game-changing for the art and autism community. So in addition to supporting us by buying art, we're hoping that you can just give tonight and we have giving opportunities all levels. Here's a bit of housekeeping. This is super simple. If you haven't already done it, make sure that you go to the Greater Giving site. And uh, when you log on to that site, make sure that you, um, um, that you sign up, give them your credit card, and you can keep your phone open as you, um, as you uh, sign up to register to bid tonight and to, to contribute either to the paddle raise or to any of the bidding that goes on. We recommend that you keep your phone open and that you also watch on your desktop. So we're beginning tonight uh, seeking bids at the $10,000 level. At this level of giving, you will be directly supporting the salaries of the people that you've just seen that are our facilitators. There's only two of them that work at North Pole Studios. These artists are gonna be essential to our success and to our growth. So what we're seeking at this moment is people who are willing to step up and support us in our work with a gift of $10,000. And I'd see already, thank you, Eddie Martinez for your gift, your generous gift of uh, $10,000. I'm hopeful that there are more out there that can give uh, at Eddie's level. So thank you, Eddie. That's super um, special and meaningful to me for a lot of reasons. So as you consider the level that you might be able to get, give at, let's hear some more from the early adopters of the North Pole Studio, some of the artists that we're serving now already. And I wanna thank Brian McMullen in advance at Northwest Film Co Company for his amazing work in donating his time 
to help us capture some of the stories of the artists that we're already serving at North Pole Studios. Hi, my name is Davis Wolfert, and I'm here to answer some questions from all my friends. My name is Lily, and I'm 18 years old, and I've been drawing ever since I was very little, and it's very passionate. I'm very passionate about it, and it's one of my greatest hobbies. My name is Nathan Weno. I am 20 years old. Hi there. My name is Austin Bragg. I'm an artist, and I live in Portland, Oregon. Um, I love, obviously love to draw, specifically in pen and ink, uh, doing sitting drawings and transportation scenes. What it means to be an artist to me is being able, is that you create themes and you're passionate about it and it doesn't have to be like perfect, you just draw and create what you like. What does it mean for me to be an artist is like when I be an artist, I can make art out of anything. Color, paint, and glue. Being an artist means to create drawings and pictures and paintings. I like making art with crayons, markers, and colored pencils. What art means to me is being able to learn to be patient for the result you want to get. And to be able to connect with the world through your art and be able to share your interests through your art. That art can mean many different things. Art has been very important to me in my life because it allows me to express myself and cope with my anxiety and many other things. My media preference is probably a mixture between drawing on paper with pencils and pens and digital art on the computer with my Wacom tablet. What inspires me to make art to see all the other ones' art and all the movies that are different styles of animation. My favorite artist is Henry Matisse. I like his artists, I mean paintings, they're beautiful. They have lots of different colors and styles. I have developed my craft by uh, watching a lot of YouTube videos, mainly for inspiration, and following a lot of artists on Instagram, it does help. And, and taking a few classes here and there will also contributes. What's important to me to make art is because I choose that, because I like to share all my things I like that I've seen to the world and do remakes. Some of my biggest inspirations is our Japanese anime and manga. I love the style of that and also the video game series Star Fox. I'm very passionate about all the characters and I love to draw them. Zoe Saldana, Jack Black, Jack Black, Amy Adams, Jason Segel, and other famous people. They all have one thing in common for these people. Popular, they could be, and for us, for you and Mary Ellen and all of my friends, and we could be next on the list to become very popular. My plans for what I'm going to do after I graduate high school is I think I'm going to go to art college and maybe learn to become more professional and I might either become artist full time as a whole profession or I might choose a different career and do art as a hobby and somewhere to make some extra money. I've been teaching a class with Shane and I've been teaching a class with Vic work with Victoria in Victory Academy's art room. What I've liked about being a part of North Pole Studios is being able to um, force gather together as a group, being along and all doing the same thing, which is drawing or art of some kind, whether whatever that may be, and just being able to uh, socialize and make relationships and learning new things. What I have liked about the artist meetup is seeing each other on Zoom and in person. It's a great studio and I have my own studio where artists can come and visit anytime that they like. 
It looks beautiful. There's lots of art everywhere. One more thing for this North Pole Studios. It's full of, it also has full of harmony with elements, full of honesty, kindness, laughter, generosity, loyalty, and most of all, magic. So uh, you can see uh, how much passion there is on the part of some of our new artists at North Pole Studio that we're serving. Uh, they are really feeling the magic uh, that occurs when we bring them all together and begin to create community. So we're off to a tremendous start uh, with this auction. I'm really um, so pleased at the support that we're seeing already. It's clear that the mission of this project is resonating with so many of you and it's exciting to see this. So we now invite you to give at the $5,000 level because your donation at this level is so important. It is, a, uh, it is critical to us. Uh, I'm just gonna be transparent here. The monthly rent that we've signed up for in this incredibly beautiful space at Northwest Marine Runs is $1,380. So your gift at the $5,000 level covers us for more than three months of rent um, in this. So uh, at the $5,000 level, you can make a ma major, major difference. So I wanna thank Cliff Fry. Thank you, Cliff. Uh, you have already pledged $5,000, thank you so much. And oh, Jack Haddad, thank you for your pledge. This is amazing at this level, I appreciate it. It's, it's, it's uh, really amazing to feel the support coming from all over. And of course, at North Pole Studio here, we're talking a little bit about the physical space that we're in, but coronavirus has helped us recognize that we can serve our artists literally no matter where they are. So uh, thank you everybody in the community that's been willing to give at this level. So uh, now I'm gonna take it down to the next level and we invite you at this point in time to give at the $1,000 level. So again, the donation here grants our artists access to vital materials, to tools that they need, and ensures that an artist will have the ability to actually make art. What an amazing difference you can make uh, in the life and liberty of an indiv individual uh, that's just budding in this space, just by making a donation of $1,000, making access to art affordable for adults with disabilities, and who often lack those resources. So uh, here we go. At the thousand dollars, do I have uh, donations that are coming in? Um, thank you, Keith Bailey. Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, the amazing uh, contribution, Keith, that, that I wanna thank you to. Randy Smith, thank you so much, Randy. I uh, appreciate your donation. Um, this is just uh, tremendous to see. And Rob Ellen Anderson, Robin Ellen Anderson, thank you so much for your donation. This is just crazy. Uh, can't thank you enough. And oh, Larry Miller, live at $1,000. Thank you, Larry Miller. Um, it's tremendous to see you. And Larry Bloomhagen at $1,000. Thank you so much, Larry Bloomhagen, for uh, your tremendous contribution to this. This is uh, super meaningful and, um, and uh, really exciting. So I'm going to transition to Mary Ellen, who's going to talk a little bit more about uh, the space. Oh, Laren Derringer at $2,000. Laren, thank you so much. I can't, uh, can't thank you enough. Um, that's fantastic. Let's hear more from uh, Mary Ellen about the studio space. When we are looking for a space for the North Pole studio, we prioritize a small and intimate size, physical fi and financial accessibility, and flexibility to serve a diverse group of artists. We wanted a space for artists to explore different materials and modes of expression, while also providing an environment that encourages artists to self-regulate, attend their own sensory needs, and take breaks. We found this space in an old industrial building in Northwest Portland called Northwest Marine Artworks, a huge converted building full of working artist studios. Last winter, we happened to schedule an appointment at Northwest Marine Artworks just as they were planning the renovation of one of their buildings, therefore giving us the unique opportunity to plan the space before it was even built. In a meeting that can only be described as serendipitous, we knew we had found our place. After months of decision-making, research, and construction, our studio space has started to take shape. Ceilings two stories tall, a garage door allowing outdoor access, 
built-in storage and ample, beautiful natural light. Our studio will accommodate five to 10 artists on rotating schedules. We hope this small capacity, open plan and ventilation and access to the outdoors will allow us to open safely for artists this spring. We are so thankful to have such an inspiring space to create, but the most special and important part of our studio is not what is on the inside, but what surrounds it. We will be physically situated within a community of working artists, making us uniquely equipped to promote the inclusion of artists with disabilities into the larger art community. We know that a collective understanding and respect for diverse human experiences is foundational to a vibrant, inclusive community. Wow. Um, what a what an incredible um, opportunity here that we have to serve this community. And during that uh, during that video, I want to call out some really important donations that have been made at this time. I want to thank Tanya Mahler for her thousand dollar donation. I want to take thank Ralph Martinez for his five thousand dollar donation. Uh, I want to thank Catherine Stromberger Perez for her one thousand dollar donation. Uh, and I want to thank Pratima Razdan for her $1,000 donation. In incredible. Um, people can know that your donation today is going directly into services that are going to be felt and used uh, by this community in a meaningful way. So I'm now going to invite uh, folks to share at the $500 level. So at this uh, $5,000 level, you can support uh, engagement of our artists. So it's again, it's so important for us to uh, work uh, within the existing expanded art community. So often um, artists uh, that have autism and other disabilities are isolated. And we're so uh, committed to making sure that the artists that we serve at North Pole Studios have an opportunity to be exposed to art museums, galleries, opportunities like First Thursday in Portland and others. And so at the $500 level, you will support us in being able to continue to expand their horizons. So I wanna thank, oh, Reham Habib, thank you so much, Jeff Smallwood, Ruth Mulkey, all giving $500 donations, thank you so much. Jeremy Mercer, Deadman, thank you so much. Marta Minetti, uh, I can't thank you enough. Don Wilson, Thank you so much, Terry Tyson, Karen Weiss, uh, Rocky Bloomhagen, um, Tiffany, Jean Marie, uh, and uh, Deb Jones Schuler, all giving $500. Uh, this is tremendously uh, meaningful and helpful, and we, we can't thank you enough. So, um, just a huge, um, huge contributions coming in now um, from every uh, area. And so uh, now I want to invite folks to give at the um, $250 level. So through artist representation, we'll support lucrative careers for people that might not have any other opportunity to have a career in the arts. So many of our artists, we are budding Picassos, budding Matisses, and uh, just never have the opportunity to be discovered or never have the opportunity to be promoted uh, like a, uh, like a a regular artist in the expanded community may have the opportunity to. So recognize once we adopt a, an artist as part, of our, uh, as part of our studio and as part of our studio representation plan, the art sales from those artists will go directly into uh, that artist's um, uh, ability to make a living. So your contribution at the $250 level allows us to help support those artists and to represent them. So I wanna thank already uh, Kevin Bragg and uh, Jill Rankin, uh, Steve Deerporn, thank you so much. You, and, and, and to Fred Jones, who's committing at this level, I, I, I cannot thank all of you enough. Uh, I'm gonna ask Sula now to speak a little bit more about what has happened uh, with this community in the transition between leaving high school when they get services and entering into adulthood and the career uh, plan. Sula, can you talk a little bit about the services cliff? One of the most significant transitions young adults with disabilities face is the shift from post-secondary school into adulthood. During this period, many students and families are challenged by what is called the services cliff. When one vital network of support ends, 
and the resources are neither available or connected on the other side. In our experience working as educators with transition age students, we have seen firsthand how high the stakes are as students reach this milestone. In adulthood, individuals with disabilities face challenging and sometimes discouraging employment rates. Adults with autism in particular are impacted by higher unemployment rates than any other group. The work ethic, determination, and dedication shown by the artists you hear from tonight and the remarkable work that you see in the auction is evidence that this population's potential is absolutely misrepresented. These statistics reflect a lack in opportunities, but not a lack in ability or motivation. And they are a call for higher quality, person-centered services. The North Pole is committed to facilitating careers in the arts through direct support and advocacy. In response to the services cliff, one of the key programs we will offer is an after-school studio program. This will support transition age students who are exploring their creative voice and will connect them with mentors who are actively pursuing their own lives and careers in the arts. Our intention is to provide a seamless transition into this environment and into a community where emerging artists will be supported in pursuing goals that are personally meaningful and relevant to them. So you can see how uh, the need is so great and we're making major steps here in filling a void and a gap that is made even bigger due to coronavirus. So during that break, I wanna thank uh, Anne-Marie Petrie and Catherine Bicoy and Tracy Laird, Vicki Luisi, Gabby Boudin, uh, Mary Humstone, Ross Wilson, Michelle Hutton. Thank you all, Jill Rankin, $500. Um, this is huge, you know, huge, huge contributions and so meaningful um, in the lives. You're making a difference today with this. So I'm at the, uh, now going to move to the $100 level. At this level, you're just promoting the self-determination and helping uh, us to uh, create professional development opportunities through classes and workshops and helping us to facilitate uh, the artist with tools to grow and develop. So I wanna thank people already at the $100 level that have been giving Leslie Wilson and Maggie Benz, Molly Smith, who's already given, thank you so much. And then live tonight, Doug Mendenhall and Lori Schultz, Dave Meyer, thank you for your $100. Gail Harris, thank you for your $100. Kimra Suzette, thank you. Christopher Bullard, thank you so much. Heather Benz, Thank you so much, Danny Milligan, thank you. I can't uh, express it enough how meaningful this is to us. And then finally, I'm gonna move to the $50 level because uh, I wanna have enough time for us to be talking about our artists. Um, exhibitions are so important. It's such a part, an important part of participating in the expanded artwork. So by giving $50, your donation is gonna go towards professionally framing our artists' work and helping us to package it and ship it off and, and really have a going concern here as far as what we're doing. So I wanna thank Tracy Rose, Melissa Gyor, Corey Bjorn, Erin Maxey, B. Krum Patnik, Annie Budlischlich, you've already given, thank you so much. Ben Furr, Thomas Myers, Andrea Benner, Ashley Hatchett, thank you so much for your $50 donation. I can't, I can't express enough how valuable uh, this is to all of the, the artists that will be participating in this program moving forward. It's so necessary and it's so important. I now It's now time for us to talk a little bit more about uh, our artists and meet some of the artists that have actually donated their art to this, uh, to this auction tonight. I'm gonna throw it to Mary Ellen who's gonna announce and introduce some of our artists. Hello again, I'm here to introduce the amazing art in our silent auction. This collection represents a variety of work created by emerging artists represented by the North Pole Studio and established artists who have joined us in supporting our mission. 
Included in our collection is a beautiful painting by Christy Cassano, our neighbor at Northwest Marine Artworks, a piece from Joni Smith, a prolific multimedia artist who is featured in our inaugural virtual exhibition, and work from Nick Stokes, a graphic designer who has invested interest and effort into one of our budding artists. We thank these artists for sharing their art with us, for sharing in our belief in a more accessible art world, and for illuminating the notion that no matter our differences, we all share in the experience of being an artist. Please enjoy as Sarah takes you through the art and introduces you to some of the artists who have so kindly contributed to our community. So hey, we're getting more, uh, more in-person donations coming up here. I wanna thank Julie Lee for her $50, Jessica Decker, Dar Rostek, thank you so much. If you haven't done so, make sure to register today from Greater Giving because it'll be on Greater Giving that you can actually uh, uh, register and bid on the art that you're about to see. So uh, our first, uh, and, and this auction that you're about to see will remain open until December the 14th. So please continue to bid. Our first artist that we're honored to spotlight tonight is a prolific Portland artist by the name of Joni Smith. She is really somebody special. So uh, Joni, um, has generously donated this beautiful series. And while you're placing your bid on Joni's art, here's Joni and Therese to share a little bit more about Joni's story. How is art meaningful to your life? Can I share what I think? Art gives you a way to express some of the more like complex thoughts, dreams, emotions, opinions that maybe you don't have signs for. Seems like you really love to share your art with others, give your art to your friends. That seems like an important way for you to connect and sort of share yourself with um, the world and especially during COVID. I think seeing Joni as an artist is beneficial for all the people that support Joni, that are Joni's friends, that, that Joni interacts with in the world because it's a way to see Joni as a creative, as a professional, as a as a member of a community. I think it's Joni, I think people, lots of people without disabilities never find like their passion in life. And I think it's, it's cool that even though because of how society is set up, you've had like less opportunities than others, especially back in like the 60s and 70s, you still manage to like, advocate for yourself and find your passion and you know seeing Joni as like a, a mature adult artist with 60 plus years of experience is like I think could be like a a real paradigm shift. I think a paradigm shift is really uh, serving an artist like Joni, um, who is, uh, you know, more mature. And uh, the idea that Joni would have an opportunity to make a living, be understood, be supported, have a following for the incredible art that she's able to share and for her voice to be understood is, is truly going to be remarkable and one of the biggest unlocks that we're going to um, uncover here with North Pole Studios again. So thank you so much for both bidding on Joni's art and for all of you that have so generously supported us. Thank you. The next artist that we're proud to spotlight is Portland artist, Austin Bragg. You saw Austin a little earlier in the, um, in the piece. Austin um, has is his precision, his attention to detail is absolutely stunning. He's stunning. And it's, and it's evidenced by the piece that he's donated to us called the Portland Streetcar. So here's Austin to tell us a little bit more about his life and his story as an artist. My name is Austin Bragg. I'm an artist. I have been doing art since um, I was in my early teens. I, I focus on um, doing drawings for accurate redemptions of cities and um, temples of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. 
I like architecture. I am inspired by other artists who do that kind of thing, like Stephen Moulcher, one of my all-time favorite artists, who draws cities from memory. And I really like his style. So I'm kind of like representing that in my art. way of leaving a mark on the in this world um, my way of showing my interests while also doing my, my interests at the same time there will always be barriers um, it's part of life personally it's not that big of a deal to me i'll always be drawing no matter what I love how Austin already knows that there will always be barriers and he's ready to break down those barriers and we at North Pole are ready to help him. So thank you, Austin. So the next artist we're honored to spotlight is abstract painter Mason Ryder. Uh, so uh, please check out Mason here. He's painted since childhood. And in the last couple of years in high school, he's begun creating these colorful, most incredible expressive works uh, so please, uh, as you place your bids and think about uh, bidding on Mason's work, I'm happy to introduce him and his mom, who's going to help him share his story as an artist. Hi, my name is Lisa Reeder. I am Mason Reeder's mom. Mason is 19 years old. Um, he is an amazing young man. Um, he was diagnosed with autism when he turned three. We noticed really early on, however, that he was absolutely drawn to the arts. As he got older, we noticed he definitely leaned toward painting as a preferred art medium. He definitely is confident um, as an artist. He uh, loves to choose his colors. He takes his time with each piece that he works on. He, Mason has um, developed such a love of sitting in front of his canvas and creating. And um, we uh, love that Mason has this outlet um, in his life, um, something that he loves doing so much. Thank you, Lisa and Mason. And uh, that's a story after my own heart with that mother and son story there. Um, Mason has so much to share. So uh, thank you. And thank you all for uh, going and checking out a Mason's art that he donated and also just art that he will be creating uh, in concert with North Pole Studios moving forward. Finally, I wanna thank Trish Anderson uh, for joining us and for donating uh, work and being a friend and a collaborator from the expanded art community. As you know, one of the things that we're passionate about in North Pole Studios is collaborations between the expanded art community and our, our community of artists within North Pole Studio. So there's something really magic that's gonna happen when we unlock those types of collaborations. So uh, please bid on, Trid's, Trid, on, on Lisa's extraordinary piece that's uh, done on fiber. It's called Here, There and Everywhere. Um, this piece is, is tremendous and would go for literally thousands of dollars. So I'm hoping somebody snaps it up tonight. I'm super touched that Trish has um, shared it with us, but enjoy this interview and this collaboration between Trish and Davis Wolford as they share how art is vital and meaningful. Hi, can you hear me? I can, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Uh, hey, Davis. Hey, Trish. Hi. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. How about yourself? I'm wonderful, too. Thank you for doing your artwork to North Pole Studio. Can you tell me a, a little bit about your piece? Yeah, I actually have it right here. Do you want me to show it to you? Yeah. OK. And you still have my painting I painted for you? I do. 
I don't have it downstairs right now, but I do, and it makes me so happy. So this is the piece that I, I still have to title it. Maybe you can help me think of a title. Um, it's, it's bigger than the camera can. <laughs> um, so this is, if you, let me see if you can get it close enough. Do you see the stitches? Yes, it's yarn. Yes. Yeah, so this is made using my tufting gun, which is the tool that I use to make my artwork. Here it is. Maybe it'll get to hang next to one of your pieces. That's really fun. Yeah. Why is art important to you? I I personally just really enjoy creating and making and I find that I'm most myself when I'm doing that. Um, and then equally, I love sharing my work and people, other people to experience it. Um, you know, I, I think that that's a wonderful gift to be able to give the world. How about you? Well, it's important to me because I like to share the world, how great that I can do. And all yep. the stories that I can tell and the pictures that I make. Yeah, and you tell good ones. Thank you for chatting with me. It was my pleasure. Thanks for talking. Thank you, Trish, so much. Again, that's what it's so about, those collaborations between artists like Trish and artists like Davis. Um, that's what this is all about. And we're super excited about what the possibilities for are for that type of inclusion. So thank you so much. What an incredible night. Remember that both the opportunity to support us through the paddle race and bid on the auction are gonna remain open through December 14th. So if you didn't get a chance to, uh, to contribute or bid tonight, please check it out and um, look at all the different ways that you can support us on the site. Um, I'd also like to give a final shout out to the North Pole Studio Board. As I said, it's a 100% um, volunteer board. So Heather Binns and Maddie Tigrin and Betsy Kelly and Keegan Corrado and Sula Wilson and Mary Ellen Anderson as well as our advisory board of Tom Palella, Kevin Bragg, uh, Terry Tyson, um, uh, Kat Stromberger Perez, Annette Syverson, and all of our early sponsors in Clyde Common and First Republic Bank and Zephyr Consulting and Brian McMullen. Without all of your steadfast work, none of what is accomplished tonight would be possible. And tonight has been a successful night beyond our wildest dreams. So I encourage people to keep bidding. And, and as we close out the night, we're gonna hear a final story as promised from Davis. And if you know a little bit about Davis, he has from the beginning used stories uh, to communicate. And as he has expanded his capabilities, he now uses art to help him tell those stories. So I'm now proud to present Davis telling one of his all time favorite stories around Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. But hey, folks, there's a theme here and a good place for us to leave this tonight. Everyone needs love, everyone needs inclusion, and everyone needs a hero. And you guys have all certainly showed up in that capacity for us tonight. So thank you, and good night, and here's a final word from Davis. In the beginning, a young reindeer was born, but something strange happened to him. He had a shiny nose, so his parents called him Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and they hide Rudolph's nose. Fortunately, the wintry wizard of the North Earth, the Winter Warlock, told them the truth. The, the nose that Rudolph was wearing was a fake one. The real nose was shiny and it's red. When the other North Pole creatures realized what had happened, they laughed and laughed at Rudolph's nose. They laughed and called him names. Rudolph decided to run away. One day, Rudolph met Hermit, Yukon, Julie, Beanie, Timmy, and Topper. And then, the abominable snow monster sees Rudolph's nose. They ran. With the bumble and hop pursuit, the friends got trapped, and now they're doomed. But just then, a man named Yukon Cornelius swept in and scooped up the heroes, leaving the bumble empty-handed. 
Rudolph, Hermie, Julie, Benny, Timmy, and Yukon escaped and found themselves and on the island of Misfit Toys, where they met a Charlie in the box, a dolly who cries, a plane that can't fly, a polka dot elephant, and other misfit toys. But then, when Hermie, Julie, Benny, Timmy, Topper, and Yukon were asleep, Rudolph went back to Christmas Town by himself. In Christmas Town, Rudolph discovers that his girlfriend Clarice and his parents were gone. They were captured by the Bumble. Rudolph saw this and cries, Put her down! In the nick of time, Julie, Benny, Timmy, Topper, and Yukon came to save the day from the Bumble. Everyone made it back to Christmas Town, and Hermie plucks off the Bumble's teeth. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Rudolph agrees. Rudolph got to help Santa, and their first stop is the island of misfit toys. They flew off through the cold night, delivering toys, dropping misfit toys as they go, and they all agreed it that it was the best Christmas ever. Merry Christmas!